They will cover themselves in the ashes of the dead. They will eat rotted corpses. They will drink their own urine. Oh my goodness. They will sleep within the cremation grounds. It's an idea that's very difficult for everyday Indians to take part of. Dr. Sharma, while we're on the subject of um, purity and impurity, the show that I saw uh, featured the Agoris, who um, are a group of a sect of Hinduism that uh, don't believe in purity and impurity, so they sort of act in really unconventional antinomian ways. And I was wondering if you could give us um, kind of a better picture of, of that or, or characterize how a mainstream uh, Hindu person would, th would, uh, would think about the Agori. Yeah. The mainstream, the person uh, diving in the mainstream, as it were, in Hinduism, uh, would avoid the Aghoris. Uh, would not, well, there are two aspects to the question. Will he himself or herself, is she herself, mix with the Aghoris? No. Because they do not observe the social norms to which one is accustomed. Will one therefore stop the Aghoris from doing what they do? No. Because it is their business. The point here is that Hinduism has to perform two roles simultaneously. It is a tradition which does not distinguish between religion and culture the way the two are usually distinguished. So it has to take cognizance of the whole of life. When you take cognizance of the whole of life, human beings have the need to have a society, a polity, an economy. And because Hinduism addresses the whole of life, it has to address the issue of how do human beings function? How should they ideally function as members of society, polity, economy, and so on? In that role, it lays down rules for normative living. And these are quite different from the rules observed by the Aghoris. So this explains the attitude of the ordinary Hindu towards them. But Hinduism's deeper impulse, or in a sense its foundational impulse, is to provide as wide a choice of positive spiritual options as possible to as many of its followers as possible. So it cannot rule out any mode of spiritual life which has the potential, at least in the mind of those who follow it, to help them achieve their spiritual sammambona. Now there is a certain element of contradiction involved in this, or at least tension. On the one hand, it has to observe, it has to help maintain social, economic, political order and so on. On the other hand, it also has to provide for the entire range of uh, spiritual modalities, no, man, no matter how exotic or erotic or anti-intuitive. 
And in this aspect, in its aspect as a purveyor of these means of spiritual living, it has to accommodate the auguries. So then how do people in the mainstream, um, in the mainstream religious tradition view the agori? If they don't, they don't mix with them, but you know, do they have a positive association with the agori or? Uh, the answer to this question is actually uh, is best expressed in the words of a modern Hindu saint, Ram Krishna, whom I, I think mentioned earlier also. He was a spiritual figure with a substantial following, and most of his followers were regular Hindus, what we would call mainstream Hindus. And they were criticizing a gori-like lifestyle in his presence. And he said, no, no, we should not condemn them like this. Theirs is also a path to salvation. There are many ways of entering a house, including the bathroom. 